these aren't really the best tools for this, but we'll we'll probably put a new pin in here. All right. So let's get that cut pin. See, we'll get a new one because that one's all bent now. I would recommend um, a socket wrench, but uh, I'm feeling pretty lazy today, so I'm actually just gonna use this big giant, well it's not giant, but it's really heavy. It's not a cheap crescent wrench. So, I, uh, I should get a breaker bar. You know, this, this might be stupid, but plus I, I, I'm in a lot of, that's never going to work. All right. I'll be right back. All right. I got this sledgehammer. This is not the right way to do this. I just, I'm being super lazy. Cause I packed all my tools. I don't even think that's gonna work. All right, I guess I have to go get my impact gun. I'll be right back. So I got this long breaker bar. Let's we'll see if that'll break it loose. I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna snap this thing or snap my face. This ain't cool at all. Well. Put a little more juice. Let me get the impact gun, I guess. We might have to put some heat on this. I would love to get that socket off there so we can heat up that nut. But I kind of pounded that socket down all over the over that nut. There's a little bit of it showing under that crack though. So. I don't want to have to break out the big torch. It's okay if we burn this rubber boot down here because we're getting a new one.
right, so yesterday, it's it's cold out. Um, yesterday I took that all apart, and um, let me open the hood again real quick. I I'm still really sore from going to the gym with my sons for the first time with his friends. I know I said that yesterday too, but I, I'm so out of shape. I I want to. Uh, I mean, round round is a shape, but. <laughs> I was trying to get in better shape for mental health more than more than physical. So, if you look down here, you'll see right down here. So, what happened was, uh, I think I got some of it on the video from yesterday, where the bolt was sticking up here and I was pounding on it. Uh, a friend of mine who is... I have uh, maybe like three or four um, really phenomenal mechanics um, that I'm, I'm really good friends with and I talk to daily. And it just so happens one of them called me and I said, hey, uh, you know, I'm doing, and he said, oh, you got to bang on this eyelet. Don't bang on the on top piece. Because um, the last time I did one of these, I just smacked the top and it fell out. He said if it's stuck, bang on this this eyelet here and it'll fall out. And uh, he's like, I'll be right over. So we were smacking that. <laughs> and um, I wish I got that on camera, but um, it got kind of dark out and then the camera battery went low, but whatever. So we were banging on this and he told me, he goes, you should have took the wheel off. Because then uh, he said he usually hits it on this side um, all around. And uh, I'm like, well, whatever, I didn't take it off, so what do we do? It just so happened, <laughs> one of our other friends called me uh, just just to shoot the, shoot the, you know, the shite. And uh, I said to him, hey, man, I'm doing this. He goes, oh, he goes, take your heating torch and just do one little line up and down, one little strip. Don't heat the whole thing, just one little strip up and down, which is what I did right here. He says, sometimes all it takes is a little bit of heat and then smack it. So between the two of those guys, I heated this little bit, and then my buddy Randall smacked it there with the ha ha hammer, and it just fell down. Then, this is what we got. Um, to take the end off, um, my buddy was like, make sure you count the um, the turns as you're turning it out. So I used this line right here, the tip of this. So every time I would turn the ball uh, joint thing uh, around, when it got to this line here, that's what I would count. It was 27 turns out. However, what I did on my own was I took a Sawzall before I did anything, and I put a cut. I ran the Sawzall blade next to here and cut into the old ball joint as a marker. So we'll turn it back in until it lines up. But what I didn't want to do is mark it with a pen or something and then have the, the mark get rubbed off. So I took a Sawzall flush to right here and went down into it. And I'll show you right now. All right. So you can see this is the old one. It's, it's, it's pretty slopped out. It's, it's a total mess. Um, but you see the line where I sawzalled it? So when I screw it back in, I know that that's, fl that's flush with that. So as long as this points up and that's flush with that. However, the new one, and I had to go pretty far to get this. My I got a good parts guy, but he's not close. Um, I live on Cape Cod. You, gotta, you pretty much have to travel off the... Go over one of the two bridges here to get any parts. It's kind of a pain. So I guess... I don't know if we should leave that on just to protect it for now. I'm probably going to do that until I get this screwed in. But here's the thing. So my parts guy, I went in there, and he gives me a hard time. He goes, is that left or right? And I wasn't thinking. And um, I said to him, driver's side. And he said, no, <laughs> no, stupid. Is the left thread or right thread? And I went, oh. I said, geez, I don't remember. I just unscrewed the damn thing. I said, I think it's left hand thread. And he goes, all right. Well, he's kind of like an older cranky guy. All right, well, stick your damn fingernail in there and turn the sucker. So I said, all right. 
And uh, I said, well, it's on the driver's side. Wouldn't that be? He goes, it doesn't matter. Just do it. I'm like, all right, chill, man. So I put my thumb in it, like he said. And if you put your thumbnail in the groove and see how I'm turning it to the left and my thumb, my thumbnail is traveling in farther, that means it's, that's how you can tell if it's left hand thread. I mean, it's just simple, easy way. That's how, you know, so it's a left hand thread. The only thing of it is. And I haven't done one of these in a few years. The last one of these I did was like six years ago. But if you notice, it's like a hair different. It's, it's, this shape is different than this shape. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to take some measurements. What I want to do is line these two up like this. Grease fitting to grease fitting. See the old fitting broke off um, when I was... Uh, I put a thing on it to crank this when I turned it out and I didn't get it on film but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this grease fitting and that one stick them together and <clears throat> measure from the point of the grease fitting to that cut mark then I'm gonna do the same on this one over here and then I'm gonna measure the um the distance write it down on a piece of paper or remember it if you're that good i'm kind of brain dead right now it's freezing cold out so i'll probably write it down and then what i'll do is i'll match that to it um i am gonna have this truck we're gonna replace the front end springs and everything so this truck is gonna get a front end alignment soon so i'm not gonna get i'm gonna put it back to exactly where the way i took it apart like i said i haven't i haven't I haven't done one of these in a long time, so I um I have no problem asking my friends that are really good mechanics because you know like they say the only the only stupid question is the question not asked. So if you're like me, you're mechanical, but you don't do it every day. It is good for you to check and talk to other mechanics, and even if you know what you're doing, most of the time I kind of know what I'm doing, but you should just double check, verify, or poke their brain for shortcuts a lot of times you know what you're doing but they have a shortcut so let me do the measurements on here and the marking of this and then i'll check back to you once we're going to put it on all right so here's the thing we go super lucky so you see mr cameraman aka my son <laughs> um you don't want to measure from here uh to the line the sawzall mark because this rod could be this far, you know, or whatever, and that doesn't matter. What matters is the center line of this down the center of this rod. And if this is slopped, the best way to get the center is look where they put the grease hole in the center. So what I, I did was, is I measured from the center of the grease zerk hole, and what I did was, um, if you look from the top You don't want to hold the tape measure crooked because it could literally be like, you know a sixteenth or whatever off So I took this pen and I went there and man did we get lucky three inches exact But you want to hold this straight with that and you want to hold this tape measure straight and get a straight edge up to the where the mark is and It's exactly three inches, which is super lucky so what I did was I went over here, I already marked it, um, but what I did was the same thing over here. I went to the center of the grease zerk and then I held the tape measure, you know, parallel to this rod and then just took a straight edge and marked it. Keep in mind, you want your mark, you want your mark on um on this this you want your mark to be on this side of it because that's where you're going to screw this rod to there um now the way i see it is if you get super close as long as this is up as long as we didn't move our wheels you know this truck hasn't i haven't pushed it pulled it moved it from this spot and when I dropped that, when I dropped this old one out of there, the, you know, the wheel didn't move. It's not like there was pressure on it. 
it, you know, and I dropped it out and the wheel moved or anything. Nothing. So, in theory, we should be able to screw this down to that, that Sharpie mark. And then as long as this fits up in there, which should be in the same spot. I don't think this was super slopped out. This was just loose. I don't see side to side. I'm, I'm trying to go side to side. It was just up and down loose, but side to side is good. So, because what I was worried about is, okay, so I'm going to match the new one up, but then my side to side motion is going to be off a hair from the screw. Uh, you know, I screw it in, but the side to side will be off a little bit because I measured off one that was slopped side to side. But look at side to side. It's not, it's the up and down. So side to side, it's like a six. I don't know. It does have a little play in like a 16th. But like I said, we're going to take this truck. I'm going to get new um, springs soon to get this front end up a little higher because the tire, when you have a heavy load, uh, you can see right here, it rubs this fender a little bit when you're going off road. Um, so let me, um, let me talk while I'm working here. So little back history of this truck is I bought this truck in California. I'm actually still friends with the guy on Facebook. Wicked cool dude. Uh, musician actually. Um, so he was, um, I bought this truck when the economy was in the tank. Um, so I saw it online and I drove out. See, I'm screwing it left. You know, when they say left hand, that means when you turn it to the left, you know, lefty is normally supposed to be loosey, righty's supposed to be tidy. Not here. So when I bought this truck in California, the economy was pretty bad out there. So he was getting out of trucking and getting into um, full uh, full time. He's a guitarist. Um, he was getting into playing music. And I think there was 27 turns when I took this off, but we're just gonna go until that line is flush with there. So I think that's it. So I'm gonna loosely try to fit this up in there. So I got this truck. And it was a 10-wheeler. And I brought it back to Massachusetts. And I was not... I was not happy with the... The, um... I'm wondering if we should do one more turn. No, wait. One more turn in because, and we'll see where that line is, that mark. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I wanna match this up to where it was. So that's it. So what I'm gonna do is, I didn't put any never sees in here because I didn't really have a problem with this coming out and I'm pretty sure it was original. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a socket here um, I'm gonna crank this thing down um, From what I understand it doesn't take much my parts guys also a really good mechanic And he said you don't have to crank this thing down with a gun or a four foot bar or anything just a regular You know regular, you know ratchet until it's you know just until it sucks it up and then put the uh, till you put the uh, Cotter pin in which I gotta see if if the cotter pin is in the box because I it wasn't in here so maybe it's in the box however if not we'll go uh, we'll go to where I have a supply of them and we'll put one in now um, I'm gonna suck this up here before I do uh, this one here um, but if you, as you can see my mark is over here um, on the other side um, and it's just it's just in the, um, it's just barely showing over here. Just barely. I don't know. It's really hard to see. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that's okay. We're just going to, um, like I said, this truck hasn't moved, so we're just going to trust that that's okay. 
and then uh, when they do this when they do the blocks in the spring so here's the, that's the thing I want to tell you I bought this truck in California right they slam all their front ends down low um, so they took out the spacers and the blocks so this truck is really low in the front now my plan is I want to put it back level I want the truck to ride level because um, I have to go off-road so I don't want to be twanging bumpers um, so we're going to, um, my parts guy's trying to find me the, um, there's, um, aluminum block spacers that go in here, but they're specific for this, this truck in this year, um, is what he told me, but I would like to switch over to a two leaf, um, like, uh, the Peterbilt two leaf, um, springs instead of all these little thin packs, and then, um, put the spacers in there, or you can just get, um, a different, um, it's got a different curve to them, so it's more of a curve spring down. Um, there's a spring shop here, and I was thinking about just taking this to the spring shop and have them do it all. Uh, they gave me a price. They said somewhere between two grand and twenty five hundred to do everything. I might just do it because they have the machine to do the alignment after also, because um, these tires are fairly new. So whenever you get an alignment, what you want to do is is you want to have your tires. Um, put on the truck, uh, so like right before you go to get alignment, you should get new tires and then have them align your front end to those with those tires on there. Um, so let me get um, big wrench and then I'll check back in a minute. All right, well, so all my t tools are kind of in storage, they're all stored. So on the way home from buying this thing. I took the I took the nut and I stopped at Harbor Freight, and um, I matched it up with one of these sockets. I can't get this thing off. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, Harbor Freight, mm. but I gotta be honest with you. Other than electric, like you know, like an angle grinder or something, as far as like affordable good sockets. I have yet to break any of their sockets, and I'm I'm pretty brutal on sockets. Um, I'm pretty brutal on tools in general. A lot of times I don't even use them correctly because I don't care. So my friend that I grew up with since I was a kid, uh, he actually is a Mac Tools dealer. He's always trying to get me to buy tools. However, I'm not a full-time mechanic, so I don't want to spend the money. I mean, these black sockets that I got from there, these impact sockets, these things are pretty heavy duty. And like I said, all right, so like I said before, the only thing I don't like about Harbor Freight stuff is their packaging. I do not. It's like, <clears throat> good Lord. However, like I said, I've put pipes on these things, everything. Since my tool, my other tools are in there, it was cheap just to stop and get this. So, I am going to crank this nut up like the um, parts guy told me to. You can see the line there. I actually had to adjust it. See a faint little black, very faint. I don't know if you can see. See the Sharpie mark, like faint. You get the point. So what I'll do is, I'm just gonna do like he told me and just keep cranking this up till it stops. This is not a four foot, this is like two foot. So. Um, the only problem is I gotta go a little more because I gotta line up the, the cotta hole, the, co the cotta pin hole. 
Um, almost. A little more. I'm gonna go a hair more just to line up that hole. Yeah. All right. Let me go find a cotta pin, uh, cotta pin, and see if it fits in there. I'll be right back. All right. So I got this kit. I've had it for a while. Some of them are starting to rust. You know, but that it's all right, I guess. Um. I honestly don't remember where I got this kit, but I know I didn't pay for it. I think if I cleaned out a friend's shop. I feel like that's the one, but for some reason it's not going. Maybe a little skinnier. Maybe this one. It's kind of loose, but I guess it works. All right? Let me try... Uh, I'd like to have this slightly fatter one in there. Maybe I could bang it in. Tap it in, you know. I'll use the um, proper hammer. And, nope. Let's, uh, that's really loose. It's probably not a big deal, but I don't think I can go in that way. Because of the tire. Maybe we just need a bigger proper hammer. Huh. Interesting. Well. That was an epic, not really epic, but that was definitely a fail. Let's use this proper tool and reverse process. Um, see, just the problem is this kit is not in order. So that's kind of loose, but we'll keep that one off to the side. It could have just been a slight bit of rust on it. There's so, see they're not, I think this kit tipped over by accident somewhere. So, that's a big no. I think my friend had a um, repair shop and he was getting out of the business. He was an older guy, I got a lot of older friends. And, um, he was retiring and I think I bought a whole bunch of stuff off of him. And this was one of the things I bought and it tipped over. So back to about this truck. I drove this back from California. When I got home, I was driving around as a 10 wheeler for a while, but then they started going up on all of uh, the registration fees and everything here in mass. And then, I think this is the twin door, other one. Yeah, but it's longer. Then what happened was, is I decided I didn't want to pay all the fees. I wanted a really cool six wheeler. Um, so I I got I switched it to air ride. I chopped the frame. I dropped the pin. I think we're just gonna go with this one. See, that's, I don't like that being loose. Like that. It's just, I, I think it's like a, just a matter of finding the right one. I think we're going to have to just go with it. Because, uh... I don't, I don't think I have a choice here. I guess as long as it keeps the nut uh i'll use the proper hammer again and i am being sarcastic then we'll just bend this around
All right. Not super thrilled with that, but out of all of them, that's the one that that fits in there. I mean, I don't. I really don't like that. I'm taking it out. All right, let me check back when I find one that fits. I'm just gonna check the other side to see if it's. All right. So this little kata kata pin over here, or whatever. It's it's got a little play in it too. So okay. I feel safe. See, this one was tight. No play. Um, I found this from greasing. You should always grease your trucks. The other thing, too, is in the truck, I have a new one of these. The, uh, the exhaust temp pyrometer meter thing goes up to the pyrometer. I just bought a brand new one of these because for some reason the collar was junk because I got a new elbow here. Um, but... When you're greasing your truck is when you find the stuff. When you grease your truck, you start shaking things. You start wiggling things. That's how you, that's how you find out whether or not you have a uh, uh, broken part or a loose. You know, shake your drive shaft up and down. Check for U-joints and stuff. That's what, why greasing is important. So, the way that they have that other one on the other side is they have it flipped over like this over the castle nut so let's just match it up and then they took this one and wrapped it around like that which it looks silly but that's how they have it on the other side see it's tight now see it tightened up now and um i think we're gonna go with that uh, so this thing here wedges itself up in there. So this doesn't actually, this rod down in the ball joint doesn't actually turn. The ball goes down into the socket and turns. So this part is the part that turns. This stays the same. So let's get the bolt and put it through there. Um, all right, okay, so when I took this apart, the bolt went down i'm assuming so if it loosens up it don't fall out uh you just lose the nut but we're gonna put it down and then tighten up and i believe i still have the socket out here from that deep socket because you have to run up the bolt so you don't i don't i don't use shallow sockets a lot because they bought them out so I believe that was a 24. Where's my 24 wrench? Uh, right here. No, that's my 22. Oh, there it is. All right, so. We're gonna crank this down. After I crank this down, we gotta grease this thing. So I'll have to crank this puppy down. And then find the grease gun, which should be in the toolbox on the passenger side of the truck. Okay, now, once you get down to the bottom, you won't be able to turn the wrench no more. You gotta tighten the nut onto the bolt. And It helps if you can jam the wrench against something. So we'll put it against the axle. <clears throat> Just remember not to trash your fingers. So this is kind of awkward position. I gotta get down on the ground here, but first things first, I need to get this out of the way so we don't spill those in the driveway here. Working on the stone is painful, but until the garage is built, ugh, that's what we'll be doing, because we got to get it done. So, ugh, I might give it a little foot action, just because of having no leverage as I'm 
in between the tire. Give it, I'll give it one more crank on my foot and then that's it, we'll call it good. It seems like I'm giving it a lot, but when you're crammed on the ground in between the tire and the thing with a little short wrench, you're not really doing what you think you are. All right, see? So that's how that's supposed to work. That's pretty good. Now, let's get the grease gun. I'll pop this little plastic thing off and I'll show you how to grease it. All right, so here's the old rubber boot. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's freezing cold out here. So if I'm shaking and I'm talking fast, that's because I'm freezing. So um, here's the old rubber boot. You can see I burned it a little bit with the torch when I, when I did a little heating. That's okay. Um, we're going to throw that out anyway. This is junk. Now, I don't know if you can see under here. See that little red cover on the grease fitting? The grease fitting. You take that off. All right, there's your grease fitting. I'm going to um, see if my cameraman can come down here a little more with me to get this rubber boot. So I got a, um, just a little pistol grip grease gun right now. I'm going to put it on there. Now watch the boot. The boot should expand the rubber boot. You see it? Once you get enough grease in there. Now the grease that I'm using is um, red and tacky. I got to tighten up the, um, the end of the fitting here because it's not fitting it's not staying on i got it though now that boot should get a little fatter however my grip i gotta tighten up the tip on the grease the grease gun itself see it getting bigger can you can you see it? Yeah, it's getting bigger. Okay. That's enough. When it just starts to get a little bulge, that's enough. You don't need to go crazy. Then, you know, what I like to do is I like to grease my truck after um, I pressure wash it or it rains or whatever, and you can push the water out with the grease. But seeing as this is brand new and this boot started to grow a little, get fatter, that means that this whole rubber boot's full of grease. This whole socket down here in the ball is full of grease. And um, we don't need to go blowing this out everywhere. Like on a machine where you would typically grease it till you see grease coming out. Um, till this gets older, we don't need to do that. Okay, let's clean up the tools. Take it for a ride. All right, we're gonna go uh, take this for a ride and test it out. Yeah, something seems a little off here. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Everything seems normal, right? Oh, uh, we're cold. Clutch brake is not grabbing. What's up with this? What's up with the clutch brake? That was weird. You may need to adjust the clutch. Um. All right guys, well it started off all fun and games with a cowboy hat, joking around with my son, and then all of a sudden, I realized that the clutch brake wasn't working. Well, the day before, it was pouring rain out, and I think maybe some water got up in the dust shield on the bottom of the transmission or something, or condensation. And the day we were changing this tie rod end, 
is freezing cold to the point where in some of the video I couldn't even talk right. It might 
road. That's the problem. You know, that's the problem with this road. But other than that, I think uh, I think everything's good. But like I said, I'm gonna get an alignment soon. I'm gonna have those um, springs replaced and get an alignment. I think that's too big of a job to do in the driveway. So anyways guys, 